Blog Talk Radio. This is the Light of Truth Radio broadcast with Michael Boldea. All right, welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. This is the Light of Truth Radio broadcast. I am your host, Michael Boldea. And as always, it is good to be with you. It is a very gloomy day here in Wisconsin, uh, as has become customary. Uh, we like to let you know up front if the program is live or recorded. Today we happen to be recording the program, but fear not, it is fresh, as the kids like to say. Today is uh, February the 4th, the year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, one uh, Mr. Joseph Robinette Biden has been in office for 15 days, and uh, well, the body count keeps stacking up, doesn't it? Uh, we're not going to, well, at least maybe tertiary discussion of politics today, but um, I've, I've been, how do I put it? I've been trying to put off this moment for some time because I know that it will affect some of you negatively. Uh, It will make some of you dislike me. It will make some of you hate me. Um, But I have to do this nevertheless because sooner or later this this particular Band-Aid has to be ripped off so that we, we don't live uh, in a parallel universe, so that we don't live in la-la land, so that we don't waste the rest of our lives waiting for something that will never come to the shores of this country. Um, because that would have been a wasted life. And um, few things in this universe... Um, are more lamentable than a a wasted life. You can try and fail. You can try and succeed. But if you never try and you're always sitting on the sidelines, if you never try and you're always looking to blame somebody for the reason that you didn't succeed at the thing you never tried, um, it it, it becomes cumbersome, psychologically speaking. Uh, So... Again, uh, today's program, uh, please understand that I have to do this. Um, It's better to do it now rather than a year or two or three or four years from now uh, because there will inevitably be those that will come along and tell you exactly what you want to hear And you will praise them for it, even though every sign points to the fact that they're lying through their teeth. Now, the thing that I'm speaking of, the thing that I'm referring to, is is this idea of a vast revival sweeping the nation from shore to shore. This vast idea of, of a reawakening of American morality. This idea of a phoenix rising from the ashes to be placed atop the mountain once more. Um, A lot of believers and a lot of patriotic people, and believe me, I understand where you're coming from. I understand the desire to want to believe this because it, it, it does so hope in the hearts of people who would otherwise really not have much to cling to. However, especially on the spiritual front, especially um, as it has to do with the church, I am not one of those that's looking for a mass revival in these last days. Would I like it to occur? Yes, by all means. Revival, great thing. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But in order for revival to happen in any nation, in any town, in any state, however you, in in the world, the church itself has to be in a certain position. The church itself, the people of God, 
Because I know we all love to quote the verse, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. But there's more to that verse than just humbling yourself and praying. And God's people, generally speaking, for the most part, aren't even doing that. So today we're going to get into 2 Timothy chapter 3 for a little bit, uh, so that you understand what the last days will look like, not, not as far as the world is concerned, but as far as the church is concerned. Because this is, this is where a lot of people miss the boat. They read this, this chapter and they go, wow, well, yep, the, Paul was right. The world does look like this. Paul wasn't talking about the world, and I'm going to prove it to you. So, we're going to get into this, because I don't want to be the one to break your heart. But somebody has to. And if I wait around for too long and, and refuse to say the truth that I know is the truth, then at some point somebody will write me or call me or, or, or come to me and go, why didn't you tell us we weren't supposed to expect a big old revival sweeping the nation where, who is it? Todd Bentley's back, where Todd Bentley would lead a revival of billions. Why didn't you tell us? So I don't want to be guilty of not telling you something that I know to be the truth. Because we're expecting revival. We're expecting rebirth. We're respect, expecting a return to normalcy and decency and morality. And we're, we're, we're shifting further and further away from these things. And we're beginning to either criminalize normalcy and morality or, or call it mental disorder. Evil has become good. Good has become evil. Light has become darkness. Darkness has become light. And these people have lost their minds. But let's get back to Second Timothy. I know. I'm, I was excited to hear Todd Bentley was back. I mean, if, you know, if you've ever wanted to be kicked in the scrotum by a preacher, I, you should go to one of his meetings. So there's that. Uh, I guess he ran out of money. And then, you know, when you get hungry, Jesus tells you to go back to ministry because fleecing sheep, you know, is easy. If you have no moral compass, if you have no fear of God, if you don't believe that one day you will stand before the throne of judgment and God will judge your actions, God will judge what you did with your talents, God will judge whether or not you took advantage of his people. This is why I'm very upfront with you. I do this out of love, period. I, I don't want the program to get bigger. I don't need the program to get bigger. I don't want to hawk peanuts to anybody. That's it. I do this out of love and out of obedience to God. And if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to take time out of my life, which is temporal, when I could be doing something else without any expectation of recompense, then I'm going to tell you what I need to tell you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Whether you listen or not, up to you. Whether you accept it or not, up to you. But one day, you're going to cling to the whole idea of, of, of the phoenix rising, the phoenix rising, any minute now. One day, it'll all click and go, hey, that fat guy in Wisconsin said it wasn't going to happen, and it hasn't. So, let's get into this just a smidge, and then uh, we're going to, I guess, dissect the condition of the church. And you tell me if, as uh, some of these uh, oily-haired preachers are saying, uh, we're ripe for revival in America. Okay? All right. Second Timothy 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. When? In the last days days. As the kids like to say in Germany, willkommen. Uh, it's, it's 
now become an undeniable reality, children, that we're living in the last days. These are the days that were prophesied by Jeremiah, by Ezekiel, that were foreseen by John the Revelator, that were also foreseen by Paul the Apostle of Christ, who was prophetic, I think, more than most of the other apostles. I know, I know, Paul's a heretic. What, a third of the Bible should be thrown out? Stop. Please, please, can we focus on the things that are, are, are tethered in reality at least? Can, can we please just focus on the necessary? And then once we've got that squared away, once we've got the necessary squared away, then we can have the debate about Paul being or not being a true apostle of Christ. All right? So we're going to get back into the verse as soon as I sip my delicious beverage. I brought it in a cup from home. That's right, because I'm frugal-ish. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, from this point forward, Paul goes on to list why the times will be perilous. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Starting to sound familiar? Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And the one thing most preachers don't highlight, the one thing most preachers don't accentuate, is the fact that this entire list of why the last days will be so perilous is not something that will define the world, because the world's always been this way. It's something that will define the church the household of faith, the people that purport to be of God, because the godless don't even have a form of godliness. Do they? The godless are just godless. They're given over. They're heathens. They live for pleasure and for flesh. So don't you tell me that this is about the world. This is about those on the outside. No. This is about those inside. This is about the church. And here, I would like to pause and read you an article that was penned on January the 29th, the year of our Lord, 2021, so five days ago. And please open your ears. Understand what is happening in what we call the church today. So that we don't live with this, 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 this constant drumbeat of, oh, revival's coming any minute, just around the bend. Because in order for revival to come, 90% of the churches in the West need to be raised to the ground. Baptist minister thanks Joe Biden for funding Planned Parenthood, calls abortion a sacred decision. Yeah, I know. That's abortion isn't murder anymore. It's a sacred decision. I have a life growing inside me. What shall I do with this life? I will make the sacred decision to go into a antiseptic room and have somebody vacuum out the brains of this little life growing inside me, and God shall not judge me, because it is a sacred decision. Baptist minister, thanks, Joe Biden, for funding Planned Parenthood, and calls abortion a sacred decision. No, this is not from the Babylon Bee. This is not a joke. This isn't made up. We will read the article. 
And again, I'm sorry for pulling off the Band-Aid, but you can't just sit by and stare at your navel and wait for something to happen that's not going to happen in this country unless a lot of churches shut their doors and a lot of, unless a lot of people start being persecuted and people like the Reverend Katie Zay gets judged by God. in like manner of Ananias and Sapphira. Because between what this lunatic of a woman who calls herself a pastor said and what Ananias and Sapphira did, eh, you know? A Baptist minister, listen to this, who works as an abortion activist, praised President Joe Biden. This week, for forcing American taxpayers to fund Planned Parenthood and other abortion groups. The Reverend Katie Zay, CEO of the Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice, a.k.a. Pretend Christians for the Murder of Baby, told the Huffington Post that protecting choice is a moral issue and one that Biden has the responsibility to support. As people of faith who support reproductive freedom, we believe that everyone has the capacity to make sacred decisions about their bodies, families, and futures. By all means, you have a choice. Don't be a whore. That's a choice. Keep your legs crossed. That's a choice. Keep it in your pants. That's a choice. When you have a human life growing inside you, it's no longer a choice. It's murder. Call it what it is, Reverend Katie. Any attempt to control, restrict, or interfere with that decision is reproductive oppression, the Reverend Katie Zay went on to say. Do you want me to read the list again from 2 Timothy? I think we shall, because you can see every single one of these things in the church, playing out, and I'm not talking in in, in some backwater, backwoods, tertiary thing. Big people and big names. People that other people look up to as spiritual authorities, leaders in Christendom, are guilty of these things that Paul lists. Some more than one, some more than five. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. Have you heard what's happening at Hillsong? Yeah, good times. But we'll we'll get back to the Reverend Katie shortly. Let's, let's, Let's finish with the list, though, because you need to open your eyes to the reality that when Jesus asks the question, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? It was an open-ended question. There was no certainty to the yea of it. And if he does find true faith on the earth, it'll be a lot smaller group than most people think. That's just the reality of it. Because you know what? If you want to call... Reverend Katie Zay, uh, one of the spearheads of the coming revival, along with Todd Bentley and a couple of other losers that know how to fleece people because they tell them what they want. Oh, you know what? It's your choice. I mean, if you don't, anybody that says that, that, that you shouldn't kill a baby when it's viable, that you shouldn't 
pull a baby out of a woman and just smack it on the forehead with a hammer. That's just reproductive oppression. Well, Reverend Katie, excusez-moi, but what does the Bible say about it? See, never once in, in, in Reverend Katie's diatribe does she ever mention the Word of God. She's supposed to be a reverend. This is a woman that's supposed to be a representative of the kingdom of God here on earth. And the representative of the kingdom of God here on earth, the Reverend Katie Zay, CEO of Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice, said, any attempt to control, restrict, or interfere with that decision is reproductive oppression. Well, you know what, Reverend Katie? I also know that hell's hot. Just saying. Might want to stock up on sunscreen, girly. Let's get back to Second Timothy. See, this is why. This is why when I hear people, oh, brother, th- this is just the calm before the storm. Revival's here. Really? Advocating for the murder of babies. If judgment begins in the house of God first, 90% of churches in America need to be raised to the ground in order for the idea of impending revival to be a reality. There you go. Hate me. But you know I'm telling you the truth. Brutal. Pfizers of good. I know there's no good and evil anymore. But the book says there is. You know what is good and you know what is evil. And you've given your heart over to evil as a nation. You put people like Reverend Katie in positions of leadership over, over, over believers, over people expecting to be spiritually fed. Reverend Katie is responsible for spiritually feeding God's sheep, and this is her position. Pretend Christians for the murder of babies. I wonder how many other pastors are uh, part of Reverend Katie's uh, little clique, you know, for reproductive choice and all. You're allowed to make every choice you want before the moment of conception. After the moment of conception, you must be aware that every choice you make, you make for two. Yourself and another human being. Yourself and another life growing inside you. But no, no, no. Reverend Katie can't be bothered to to think about those things because any attempt to control, restrict, or interfere with that decision is, of course, reproductive oppression. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. This is the state of the modern-day church. We are in the last days. There are more reverent Katie's out there than you can imagine, but let's continue. Because I know you're still clinging to the hope of the phoenix. The phoenix shall rise. To what end? To make Todd Bentley a millionaire? To get more people to come to Reverend Katie's church? So they can be taught about reproductive oppression and reproductive choice? When do you think the the word repentance was, was last heard in Reverend Katie's church, or holiness, or sanctification unto God, huh? But hey, brother, revival's almost upon us. 
the fire shall fall and we shall be consumed. Stop yourself. Don't don't be foolish. Stop yourself. Look at the situation as it is. There is a prescription for revival in a land. There is a prescription for healing and restoring a land. The church isn't doing any of it. Sorry, that's just the reality of it. I know, I'm the meanie. I dashed your dreams. Well, there's, there's still Todd Bentley to fall back on, I guess. So let, let's continue with uh, Reverend Katie and her uh, spiritual counsel and, of course, praise of Mr. Robinette Biden because, um, well, it wasn't enough that we're killing record numbers of babies in America. No, no. Now we're outsourcing it to the rest of the world, financing it, paying for it. If you want to kill your baby, we'll pick up the bill. God bless America. Really? I know, revival's on the horizon. Just over them, their hills. Paying for people in other nations to murder babies. Let that sink in just for a smidge. The Reverend Katie thanked Biden for rescinding the Mexico City policy, a pro-life rule that President Donald Trump, yes, that Donald Trump, Thank you, Beth Moore. I'm sure that Reverend Katie and Beth Moore are BFFs. And they both agreed that Lady Gaga's outfit was fabulous. And that Dr. Jill's hair flowed superbly. She thanked Biden for rescinding the Mexico City policy, a pro-life rule that President Donald Trump put in place to defund the International Planned Parenthood Federation, which kills babies in abortions around the world and lobbies to legalize abortions in pro-life countries. So there are still pro-life countries in this world. The International Planned Parenthood Federation is dumping money and bribing politicians and lobbying so that they are no longer pro-life countries. Because it's not enough that your own nation has become a cesspool where you need hip waiters to wave through the blood of innocence That self-same mindset needs to be adopted across the board and throughout the world. Biden's order on Thursday will restore millions of taxpayer dollars to the billion-dollar abortion industry. Planned Parenthood and MSI Reproductive Choices are two recipients of international aid funding and they abort millions of unborn babies across the world every year. Under Trump, the Mexico City policy defunded Planned Parenthood's international arm of about $100 million, and the British-based abortion chain MSI of about $73 million in U.S. tax dollars. So, Thank you, John Piper. Hope your soapbox is sturdy. Thank you, Beth Moore. I hope you still enjoy Lady Gaga's outfit every night you close your eyes and go to sleep and consider that judgment awaits. But due to Mr. Robinette Biden being in office, you, the American tax, are now 
funding abortion to the tune of $173 million a year. You're financing it. You're paying for it. We pick up the tab as long as we can kill your little critter. Zay, which is, of course, uh, the reverend, Katie, very important, expressed hope. Listen to this. Listen to this. This woman is a reverend. They expressed hope that the Democrat president will do even more in the coming days to remove harmful barriers to abortion. Like what? Viable fetus? Baby already born? Three days old? Five days old? What's the cutoff, Katie? Hey, Katie, what's the cutoff? Do they have to be able to walk before you can't kill them? Do they have to be able to to, to file for a change of address before you can't kill them? Please, fill us in. What is acceptable in the sight of the Lord, Katie? When is it not okay to murder a baby, Katie? Mm? Is there a cutoff? They expressed hope that the Democrat president will do even more in the coming days to remove harmful barriers to abortion. To the ordained Baptist minister, by the way, if you're a Baptist right now, hang your head in shame. You should. Because the entire Southern Baptist Convention is is just a, a cesspool of rot. Look at what they're promoting. Look at what they're agreeing to. Look at what they're praising and lauding ordained Baptist minister, why isn't the Baptist denomination pulling her papers yesterday? Why aren't they rescinding her ordination yesterday? Why can this woman still call herself an ordained Baptist minister? To the ordained Baptist minister... This includes ending the Hyde Amendment, a popular long-standing measure that prohibits taxpayer funding for elective abortions in Medicaid and other federal programs. So the Reverend Katie isn't only thumbs up for abortion, she thumbs up for making you pay for it. They, which is Reverend Katie, slammed the amendment as unjust, saying it disproportionately impacts those already struggling to survive. If you're struggling to survive, you don't have time to be a whore that's willing to murder her baby. Sorry, not sorry. If you're struggling to survive, you have three jobs and sleep three hours a night. Unbelievable. Reverend Katie. I'm sure that soon she'll go on tour with Beth Moore. You know, queens of the kingdom unite. You you, you buy a ticket to their conference. Free abortion on Beth Moore or Katie, whichever. Yes, birds of a feather flock together. You want to, hey, uh, we'll get back to Katie. However, ah, okay. Now remember back, back in the olden days, a few months ago, when I told you, look, you need to understand who you're siding with. Because When the lines are drawn, you're going to be on one side or the other. Beth Moore made her choice. Reverend Katie obviously made her choice. And a lot of supposed Christians made their choice. Because, oh, the orange man was so horrid with his tweet. Um, 
Well, these are the sort of folk uh, that, that banded together to unseat the big orange man. Never Trump Lincoln, Lincoln Project founder, John Weaver, accused of sending provocative messages to young men. Now, we're not going to get into the whole thing because John Weaver's a pervert. That's cut and dry. There's no denying it. But, again, who do you align yourself with? These are the sort of people you align yourself with, Beth Moore. These are, and, and under, ah, now, now, these are the people he worked for. Just so you understand context. Just so you understand the whole thing about birds of a feather flock together. Weaver, who formerly worked with the late Senator John McCain, Republican Arizona, and former Ohio Governor John Kasich, two very vociferous, anti-Trumpers, was accused by 21 men of sending unwarranted messages, one who stated that he began receiving messages when he was 14, one four, teenager, 14 years old. Mr. John Weaver is a predator. He groomed little boys to do naughty things to as young as Fourteen. So you know what? I can lay my head down on my pillow every night and sleep soundly knowing whom I have aligned myself with. Can the same be said of Beth Moore? I don't know. But let's get back to the Reverend Katie. The paragon of American spirituality circa 2020, 2021. Well, it's 2021 because she's praising Mr. Robinette Biden for what he's done in the last two weeks. He's been in office 15 days. Can you imagine what this country will look like in four years. Because it doesn't matter if, if Mr. Robinette goes towards the light. You, you've got Kumala waiting in the wings. Just, again, it, it's, not, it's not them. It's the people behind them, the ones that, oh, went out on a limb to make sure that they got in. So, 15 days in. All indications are that Biden supports Zay's radical pro-abortion agenda, even though most Americans do not. In April, Biden called the killing of unborn babies an essential medical service. Indeed. During the coronavirus pandemic, his health care plan would expand abortions as well by forcing insurance companies to cover abortions as essential health care under Obamacare. On the campaign trail, he also abandoned his support of the Hyde Amendment and promised to work with abortion activists to get rid of it. Because why have your own children when you can have millions of fully grown adults who speak no English and don't know how to use indoor plumbing streaming across your borders. Honestly. Now, come on. Just, I know, I know, I know your feelings are hurt. You're upset with me. I've, I've just put a pin in the idea of resurgence and revival and rising phoenixes, or is it phoenix eye? But, 
let's let's just have a moment of brutal honesty. Do you really believe if this pace keeps up, this nation will survive or look anything like it looks in four years? There you go. But I, I know, I know. Todd Bentley said Jesus told him it's time to get off the bench. It's time to jump into the game and win souls for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the amendment used to have strong bipartisan support in Congress, and still has the support of most Americans. According to the Charlotte Institute, about 2.4 million people are alive today because of the pro-life Hyde Amendment. Let that sink in. 2.4 million people are alive today because of the Hyde Amendment. And the only thing the Hyde Amendment says is taxpayers shouldn't be forced to pay for other people's murdering their babies. I'm sorry. I don't want to put my hand into that particular pot. A new poll from Marist this week found that an overwhelming majority of Americans oppose Biden's plan to force taxpayers to fund abortions. According to the poll, 77% oppose using tax dollars to support abortion in other countries. It, it, it's happening. I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. These people have an agenda. What the people want. What the people think. Irrelevant to them. They're just going to keep pushing this and pushing this until the cup of wrath just pours over. That's the best way I can put it. Back to Reverend Katie. who is, as of the reading of this article at least, an ordained Baptist minister. Looks like we're ripe for a revival, doesn't it? Almost there, just over the hill. This and I may be generalizing just a smidge, but this is in large proportion modern-day Christianity. Exactly what Paul described. People having a form of godliness. Hey, the Reverend Katie is an ordained Baptist minister. She's got the paperwork to prove it. But, Reverend Katie also wants you to fund abortions with your tax dollars and insists that any attempt to control, restrict, or interfere with that decision is reproductive oppression. Now, and this all dovetails into this idea of of the last days, so... Because there's so much more to discuss. But I want to finish off at least a couple more verses out of Timothy because it tells you what you should be doing when you see these things happening in the church. Because a lot of Christians who are not in leadership, who are not pastors or evangelists or teachers, sort of shrug off the idea of any responsibility and sit in pews like Reverend Katie's week after week. But Paul does say that if you see these things within the congregation, If you see people being lovers of themselves and lovers of money, boasters and proud and blasphemers and disobedient, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, 
If you see the leadership especially having a form of godliness but denying its power. It's your responsibility to turn away from such people. That's what the book says. And from such people, turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I know, I know, what a misogynist Paul was talking about gullible women. Exhibit A, Beth Moore's fan base. Exhibit B, Reverend Katie's congregation. And by the by, if you happen to be the husband of one who is among the fan base of Beth Moore or who happens to sit in the pew of Reverend Katie, shame on you. Shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. You're supposed to be the head of your household. When you see these things transpiring, don't just sit there and bite your tongue. Say, no, this is not the place for us. And if she asks why, point her to the Bible. Because I'm sorry, the Bible has to have the final say, not Beth Moore or Reverend Katie. Another reason why I'm not optimistic about the future of the nation is just the absolute level of mental lunacy that, that, that seems to have just flooded out. I mean, it, 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 it's as though we saw the breaking of the dam. The San Francisco Unified School District now labels acronyms a symptom of white supremacist culture. So basically, if I were to say RIP USA, I'm a white supremacist. I used an acronym. And because I used an acronym... It just goes to show I'm a white supremacist. It's a symptom. Okay, this is the next generation. By the way, if you're in your 40s and you think you're going to be able to draw a pension, if you're in your 40s and you think you can draw Social Security, this is the up-and-coming generation that's supposed to work and pay taxes to fund your retirement. Is it sinking in yet? Are you scared yet? These are the people that are supposed to join the workforce in four years. People who only know safe spaces and hugging themselves because somebody said something mean. People who don't have a clue what to do in life other than look for microaggressions and label everything Everything, it's not even what they don't like. Everything is now white supremacy. Acronyms. Acronyms. The San Francisco Unified School District has deemed acronyms a symptom of white supremacy culture. So... Uh, If you thought the future was looking bright, open your eyes and look around you. Now, there's also one more thing that I wanted to, 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 to dovetail into today's program before we leave. And I'm sorry, I didn't have time for your uh, questions. But 
you'll see how these things evolve with time. New York Times column urges Mr. Robinette Biden to appoint a reality czar and establish a truth commission to solve the reality crisis. So what is reality? Well, apparently, according to the New York Times columnist, Reality is whatever they tell you reality is. And because so many of you refuse to see the reality the way they see reality and acknowledge it as being reality, well, now you just need to get re-educated. So if perchance uh, you say that gender is binary... Well, you're denying reality. You're living under a collective delusion. You see where this is going? No? Oh, you will. You will. And you ask how we got here? Well, that answer is simple as well. We got here because the church stopped being what it was supposed to be and it stopped doing what it was supposed to do. It's as simple as that. Yes, 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 yes. The blame lies squarely on the church's shoulders. Because if someone like the Reverend Katie can still call herself an ordained Baptist minister, what expectations can we have of the godless? If someone who is supposedly a representative of the kingdom of God, calls abortion a sacred decision, insists that taxpayers should have to pay for them, and is aghast at the idea of any attempt to control, restrict, or interfere with abortion. What can you expect of the godless? Now, there is also another verse in the Bible that we should probably keep an eye on. Judgment begins in the house of God. This is what the book says. Judgment begins... At the house of the Lord. And in 1 Peter 4.17, we are forewarned. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? There is a shaking and a sifting coming. And that shaking and that sifting will not target the godless. It will not target those that do not obey the gospel of God. The shaking and the shifting will target the house of God. 
because the time has come. Judgment must begin. Because although we know better, we are doing reprehensible things, all the while calling ourselves ordained Baptist ministers. So this was what has been on my heart for a while now. I needed to get it out so that my hands would be clean. I needed to get it out so that I would not be accused of not saying anything when I should have. With that, I pray that God bless you. I pray that God keep you. Lord willing, we will be with you again next week. Um, And until then, Gino, if you've got anything to say, the floor is yours. Yeah, I suggest, Mike, we have a Sodom and Gomorrah hand dictionary with all these new terms. You know, it's incredible how far we've fallen. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I asked Dimitri many times, what will perpetrate judgment in America? And he said, sin in the church, sin in the church. A Baptist minister that doesn't know their Bible at all, doesn't stand for life, Catholic Church that never disciplines their leaders, including Biden, who has no right taking communion, et cetera. And it's, it's tragic. And you can go down the list. Todd Bentley, how does he get restored back to ministry? That's what umbrella of leadership does he have that would even augment that? And, and Mike only touched on it, like really touched on it because it's huge out there. And you've got the whole Carl Lentz debacle with Hillsong that nobody in the church knew that he was cheating or basically, you know, saying and and, and meeting a gal and not even admitting he was married. It's a disaster. And the scriptures are clear. Judgment begins with God's house. And I would urge people, study Timothy out, which Mike shared today, and warn, Lord Trump, be a watchman, warn as much as you can because rough days are ahead god bless you thank you for listening to the light of truth broadcast thank you for listening to today's broadcast the light of truth with michael baldea if you would like to order a copy of today's broadcast please visit our website at handofhelp.com if you have questions about our ministry You can email us at handofhelpoffice at AOL.com or simply call us at 920-206-9910. God bless you.